Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and I get asked a lot about soft focus powders. So I thought I would run some trials to find my favorites and then bring them to you in a video. Now I actually studied eight different materials and in this video I'm gonna show you my four favorites. Uh, these are ones that I've used in bases that were compatible for each material and using amounts specific to each material based on supplier recommendations and to get a relatively good effect in the finished product. Let me show you my results. These are the products here. Now these two here we're using materials that can be classed as natural uh, and can go into natural products. These here we're using some synthetic materials. So it depends on what your company philosophy is, you have got a bit of choice. As you can see with this material here, it is quite a, a brown color. This is naturally how it looks. So I would recommend this is best suited to a foundation product where the color isn't gonna be obvious, but the soft focus effect will still be desirable as part of that finished product. This one here was very easy to use, and this one actually had the best results, so I'll talk you through that one shortly. And this one here suits oil-based products only. So let's take a closer look at the results and the products. Here is the first product I gave a thumbs up, and this is VivaPure CS4FM. It's a very fine microcrystalline cellulose. Now, let me start by saying size matters. When you're creating a soft focus product, you're actually wanting some light reflective properties. So the incident light comes in and then it's reflected off. And the powder substance or the material used needs to effectively fill in that wrinkle or that fine line and deflect the light effectively or give it a matte effect. In any case, by reflecting the light back or creating a matte effect, you don't see the depth of the contour line. You don't see the fine line or wrinkle anymore. And that's how they pretty much all work. So size matters because it needs to be a really microfine particle size so that it can effectively smooth over those fine lines and wrinkles and give a really even visible result. Now this particular material impressed me because I've worked with various natural soft focus materials and I've got to say some of them don't live up to the brochure claims but I really liked working with this material. I only needed 2% to provide the results you see on the screen and I put it into a very simple emulsion base. It didn't ball up, it didn't cause any chalky or white effect on the user during application, it simply worked. The next material I want to introduce you to that I gave a thumbs up was the Nat Pure Fiber HS50. Now again, this material works on a similar concept. This is the browner looking product that really suits a mineral foundation. I used 10% of this material in the finished product, so it did increase the viscosity. I used the same base product for the natural materials, but I used more of the Nat Pure HS50 as recommended by the supplier to get the end result. As you can see from the images, it also works really effectively and would suit a liquid foundation product. When formulating with this material, it does of course increase the bulk of the product. So I would start with a lower viscosity uh, formula to begin with, especially if you're going to be adding some iron oxide colorants, otherwise the end product could simply end up too viscous. But it got a thumbs up from me because I liked the end results. Next, I wanna introduce you to my absolute favorite, and as you can see from the visible results, why it's my favorite, Grand Seal Blur X60. This one works tremendously well and it was incredibly easy to formulate with. I basically gelled my water phase and then I added the blurring agent. Now what I liked about this sort of approach was obviously soft focus materials give an instant effect only. 
It's great for consumer gratification at the time of application, but it gives no long-term benefit. With this particular material, because the formula and the way it was created and the way it gets added to a formula is so simple, I could add so much to this formula easily and effectively and still have a very stable end product. I would be able to load it with some long-term actives and give my consumer some instant gratification as well as long-term benefits from any actives I select. And because of the simplicity of this base formula, I could add water-soluble actives, I could add oil-soluble actives, I could build an entire story around the base product and then add this Grand Seal Blur X60 to give the instant visible results. Now I did use 30% of the Grand Seal X60 in line with the supplier recommendations, but like I say, I could add it to a very simple gelled water-based product. I could add all sorts of water-soluble actives in that phase. Uh, I added the Grand Seal X60, and then I could add all sorts of oil-soluble actives if I want to the oil phase as well. And I ended up with a very delightful and sensory pleasing finished serum. So it gave me formulation flexibility and instant visible results as well as formulation flexibility so I could add just about anything and create a really unique product story with great long-term results in the finished product. Finally, Another material that I really liked working with and gave some great visible results was Sarah Snow SP13. Now, this material needs to go into a volatile, low viscosity silicon base. I did need to use a lot of this material. I used 26% of the Sarah Snow in line with the supplier recommendations. As you can see, the results were very effective. Now on application, it did feel a bit greasy and heavy to apply, but it would suit oily serums perfectly. It's not something I would wanna use in a foundation product, for example. It does have some shine to it, but in a nighttime application mask or an oily based serum, its application would fit perfectly. If you want a more matte effect, then you're really better off using one of the other materials I've presented in this video. But if you're looking for a material that will help bring viscosity uh, and it does bring a gel to the end product because of the input used and the way it provides its optical blurring effect, then Sarah Snow SP13 is worth a try. Now I've got all of these formulations that I used uh, in Dropbox. Just contact us for the link to all of these free formulas. I'm happy to share them with you. Like I say, I actually tested more materials than I'm presenting in this video, but I picked these materials because as you've seen, the results speak for themselves. If you're looking for soft focus in your product, you are best to run multiple trials like I've shown you here. And as you can see, I've used various base formulas to suit the different types of materials I'm using. And I've based the input on suppliers' recommendations. I hope this has helped you shortcut some of your searches and given you some ideas. And remember, customers want that instant gratification, but they also want to see long-term results. So these products are best paired with actives that will give anti-wrinkle or anti-aging benefits over a 28 day or more period of time. But they'll give your consumer that instant wow effect to get them to keep using the product long enough to get the longer term benefits from other actives selected. I hope you've enjoyed this video content. Next up is a video showing you how to use different color correction pigments in your formulations and I'll also show you how they appear on different skin tones as well. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please leave any questions or comments below and remember to subscribe to get notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating.